Amen. Grace and peace in the name of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Good morning. Welcome to Elevation United Methodist Church. Welcome to all of you who are here at the church house worshiping with us this morning. Welcome to those of you who are worshiping at home on this very special Sunday. Today is All Saints Sunday, a day where we celebrate and honor not only the memory of the saints who have gone on to glory, but we celebrate all of us because we are all a part of the body of Christ, all a part of the communion of saints. And so I give thanks for the families that are here this morning to celebrate their loved ones. And I give thanks again for all of you being in the house of the Lord this morning for worship. Friends, we have a bulletin this morning. All right. So you can turn to your bulletin or you can follow along on the screen as we prepare to worship with our call to worship. The earth and all that is in it belong to the Holy One. This is the Holy One for whom we have waited. Who shall ascend the hill of the Holy One? And who shall stand in this holy place? Amen. Our hymn of praise this morning is For All the Saints. You can find that in your hymnal on page 711 or also printed on the screen.
Friends, let's affirm our faith together this morning with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day He arose from the grave. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So as I mentioned briefly at the beginning of worship this morning, today is All Saints Sunday. Uh, and while it is a day where we celebrate all of our saints, all of us being a part of the body of believers, the body of Christ, it is also a day where we have a chance to celebrate and to remember those folks who have gone on to glory uh, in the past year. It's a day of, of somber celebration. Because in many cases, the wound is still fresh. The, the grief is still present. And so I'm really thankful that, uh, that Miss Joe's family, that Jimmy's family, and that Charlie's family is here this morning to celebrate and to honor their memory. And so this morning, I say to you, grace to you and peace from God, who is and was and is to come. Amen. And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and ruler of kings on earth. Amen. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with all the saints. Amen. Let us pray. We bless your holy name, O God, for all your servants who, having finished their course, now rest from their labors. Give us grace to follow the example of their steadfastness and faithfulness to your honor and glory. Through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Go back. Yeah. So this morning we will just simply go in alphabetical order. So when I call the saint's name, their family, uh, feel free to come up and light the appropriate candle. Sarah Josephine. Johnson, barefoot. Mm -hmm. Just take the little accolade thing, light it off of that, and light that one. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. <laughs> Choke down on it a little bit. <laughs> James Braxton Johnson, Jr.
Charles Michael Alexander Sullivan. Friends, let us pray. Eternal, almighty, and everlasting God, we give you thanks for the gifts that each one of these saints shared, not only with the, the body here at Elevation United Methodist Church, but within this community, within this world that we live in. We know that Miss Joe and Jimmy and Charlie are all worshiping at your feet this morning and that gives us comfort and at the same time there is still sorrow and there is still grief and so we ask your continued presence in our lives as we continue to mourn these three saints while simultaneously giving thanks for the power and the promise of resurrection first shared with us by our Savior Jesus Christ we lift these prayers up in his mighty and precious name, and through the power of the Holy Spirit, and together all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Thank you all. Young disciples, come on down real quick if you can. Thank you, Todd. Hey, Skylin. What's up, Colin? Hey, Aubrey. Hey, Connor and Brett, boy, we, I, for a minute I thought we were just we were going to have Miss Scotland, but now we got a whole slew up here. Hey, Braston. Hey, Everett. <laughs> hey, buddy. You just fitting right in, aren't you? Is that your brother? That's your brother, isn't it? Hey, so this morning, what, I'm going to step out of the way for a minute. What looks different up here this morning? Oh, oh Colin. Um, there's a ton of different bags. <laughs> There is a ton of different bags up here, that's right. So, Skylin, I'm going to let you, do you remember what these bags are? Do you remember who they're for? Does anybody remember who they're for? Aubrey, do you remember who they're for? Remember, we put them together at Trunk or Treat uh, last week, Fall Festival. Do you remember who they're for? Yeah, I know you'll have a mic. Hold on a minute. Say that, stand up and say that. Turn around and say that again real quick to everybody back there, and I'll repeat it for you. Who are they for? For the kids at the hospital, that's right. So Tara Dixon came up with a great idea to make these kind of uh, busy bags, for lack of a better word. Inside each bag is a pack of crayons, uh, a uh, coloring book, and a reading book. And if I can find one, a note from us here at Elevation United Methodist Church. And the note says, we hope that you enjoy these goodies. Be strong, be brave, be fearless. You are never alone. Joshua 1.9. Love and prayers. Elevation United Methodist Church, Benson, North Carolina. And so this morning, we are going to say a, a prayer over these bags. We're going to bless them so that when, when each little kid gets one in that, that pediatric ICU or when they move out of that place and get on up to other rooms, they can maybe have a bag that they can, they can use to color and to to read and to, to just have all kinds of fun with, right? So can you all help me do that this morning? Okay, so here's what I want you to do. Colin, you and Aubrey, I want you all to come over here, and I want you to just kind of put your hands like that out over those bags, okay? Can you do that for me? Okay, all right, y'all do that. And then Skylin, well, Connor, you can help them. Skylin, you and Braston, come here. And Everett, I'm going to hold you. Y'all go over here to these bags, okay? Come here, buddy. Come here. Oh, boy. And we're going to put, hey, we're going yeah, to <laughs> we're going to put our hands out like this over them, okay? Braston, can you do that? Good job. All right. And then I invite you all to do the same thing out there. If y'all can put your hands out and extend the power of the Holy Spirit to these bags as well. And then we're going to pray, okay? 
God, you are a healer. You are steadfast and faithful. And we give thanks for that this morning and every day. God, we ask your blessing on these, these bags that were assembled with love by our children here at Elevation United Methodist Church and in our community to share some hope, to share some joy, to share some goodness for children that might be a little bit of afraid in some cases. We know that these bags will bring that joy, will bring that comfort, will bring that hope. And we know that all of that will be brought in and through the power of our great physician, Jesus Christ. And so again, we ask your blessing on these bags. Bless the children who will use them. And we ask it in the name of Jesus Christ and through the power of the Holy Spirit. And together, all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. <laughs> He's grabbing at me up there. Hmm, sweet boy. Guys, thank you so much. I appreciate that. So before you go back to your seat, just remember and, and think about all the kids that are up there. I tell you, Mr. Mike, I don't know if I've ever seen an empty room up there. When they, when they get one, somebody gone, somebody comes right in, right behind them. So just keep those children in your prayers and think about them when they're coloring and, and having fun with all the stuff. Because every one of you had a hand in putting some of these bags together. So that's an awesome thought, right? All right, I'm in. Y'all can go back to your seat now. Emily, if you get in the next slide, thank you. So, friends, later this week, we will celebrate as a, as a nation Veterans Day uh, here in the United States, a chance to honor the men and women who have served uh, in the uh, armed forces. And at Elevation United Methodist Church, we had quite a few. I, I, I reached out to a lot of you to put together a list of folks, and the Cub Scouts passed out some homemade cookies yesterday. Did you get your cookies? I saw your name on there. Yep, passed out some cookies yesterday. And so... Um, if you did not get your cookies, or if I did not get from you, please let me know. Or if you know somebody that we didn't add to our list, please let me know so that we can make sure that we, we honor them next year. But I wanted us to share this morning in a, in a Veterans Day litany, while we are always a, a people who strive for peace and who long for that day when weapons will be beaten into plowshares and, and strife will be known no more, we are thankful for the men and women who uh, surrendered their lives, in some cases, and surrendered their, their will for something greater, for something bigger than them. And so this morning, I invite you to join me in this Veterans Day litany. Governor of nations, our strength and shield, we give you thanks for the devotion and the courage of all those who have offered military service for this country. On our behalf, they have entered into danger, endured separation from those they love, labored long hours, and borne hardship in war and in peacetime. Give to us, O Lord, your people, grateful hearts, and a united will to honor these men and women and hold them always in our love and our prayers until your world is perfected in peace through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Thank you, friends. We turn our attention now to our Jesus sightings and, and prayer requests, and, and lo and behold, the very first one is from one of our veterans, Bunny O'Hara, who is lifting up and giving thanks that the Cub Scouts did indeed come and share some homemade cookies uh, with her yesterday. And Mr. Earl, did you get your cookies? Just want to make sure. Yep, good, yep. Um, so we give thanks for the Cub Scouts uh, making an effort to do that. What a, 
that's a sweet treat for sure, um, and we're thankful uh, that they passed those out. Funny story, yesterday we celebrated uh, Barrett and Bennett's first birthday party, another Jesus sighting for sure, and uh, somebody came, oh, Kristen Langdon came inside and said, do you know Adam Caldwell? And I said, I do know Adam Caldwell. And, and she said, well, there's somebody out here who wants to give him some cookies. <laughs> and so Adam is another veteran. And so I went outside, and they had, they had their old address. They had Adam and Sarah's old address in the directory. So note to self, update directory. And then uh, Sarah, thankfully, and Amy and Emily were there. And so we, we gave those cookies. So Adam got his as well. So yes, Bunny, thank you for that Jesus sighting. That was certainly uh, and, and excellent and a sweet. Now, look at this. Look, listen, y'all. No, no, you come on in. This is crazy. So we were just talking about that. So look. Jimmy Godwin, we cannot find you yesterday. That's okay. We're going, we'll get them to him. We know somebody that can get them to him. Thank you. Wait a minute. Come here. Come here. Yeah, I know you are. Tell everybody who you are. I'm Sue Ellen Deller. I'm, I'm a scout mom with Pack 19. And, and let's give, I know, let's give Sue Ellen and and Drew Joyner and all our, our scouting leaders, a big round of applause. Thank you. We will make sure, we will make sure, that couldn't have been more perfect timing. I didn't plan that, y'all, but that was pretty good, wasn't it? We'll make sure Jimmy gets these. Thank you, Sue Ellen. So we'll make sure Jimmy Godwin gets these. And, uh, and again, we give thanks for uh, all of our veterans. We give thanks for the opportunity to, uh, in a small way, but also a big grand way, um, saying thanks for the service and the sacrifice that you all shared. Uh, with your country, so thank you. Those were good cookies. Yeah, they were good, weren't they? Yeah, yeah, I got to nibble on one that she just let me have out of the goodness of her heart. They were good. Any other Jesus sightings that we didn't get a chance to write in our uh, praise and prayer book this morning? Prayer requests. Let's start off with Geraldine Creech this morning. She's doing wonderful. She called and left me a message on my phone, wanted me to share it with everybody. Um, she is doing fine. She's recuperating in Oak Island with... Uh, with uh, Gail and, and Linda, and so we give thanks for that, and thanks that they are able to uh, keep her somewhere, maybe a little warmer than this, to, to recuperate a little bit, and she, she's doing wonderful. They ended up changing the battery in her pacemaker, and that was prayerfully all that was wrong, and so she is back in, back in sync with the world and, and doing much better, so we continue to pray for Miss Geraldine and give thanks for a, uh, for a relatively easy visit to the hospital. Continue to pray for Zane this morning. Uh, Zane is, continues to do well, uh, continues to progress. Um, Sherry shared something with me this morning, and, and I just told Mike, you know, when you, when you witness how well he's doing, and I'm, I'm here to tell you all, it, it's amazing. Um, the little teeny setbacks kind of make you go, daggone it, you know? We, we, <laughs> but he is doing wonderfully. And so just continue to keep praying for Zane and for all those doctors, all those kids in the pediatric ICU and the children's hospital. Um, we're still naming and claiming Christmas, and I'm not going to stop doing that. So um, we give thanks for, for the gift of all those folks and for the gift of the, the prayers of the faithful. So continue to keep Zane in your prayers. Phyllis Thornton, you notice Phyllis is not here this morning, so a double prayer for, for Phyllis. Phyllis is preaching this morning at Salston United Methodist Church in Goldsboro, North Carolina, but she also fell yesterday. But she's, yeah, she's doing okay though, but um, she's a little sore, but she's, she's hanging in there. So please keep Phyllis in your prayers, not only for her, her fall yesterday, that she can uh, deliver a message full of the gospel this morning over in Goldsboro. We give thanks for that. We want to lift up the Glenn Flowers family. Uh, Glenn's uh, Glenn passed away yesterday, and his son uh, is a friend of Maxie's um, from, from high school, from way back. So we lift up Glenn Flowers' family this morning. And we want to lift up Kristen Wheeler this morning. She got, uh, got a cancer diagnosis, and so, Bunny, is there any treatment updates or anything, or just very early? She hasn't found out yet what we're okay. going with it. She just found out, I guess, Friday. Okay. And is this, is this a relative of yours? Or? Um, she's actually somebody I used to work with. Okay. Okay, so we lift up one of Bunny's former co-workers and friend, uh, Kristen Wheeler, as she received her cancer diagnosis this past Friday. Good to see Johnny Mack this morning. Keep Johnny Mack in your prayers. He's doing, doing great. He's waving. Y'all can't see him right there, but he's waving to you this morning. Keep Gail in your prayers, because as he gets better, Lord, he gets more full of sass than don't he, Gail? I know. That's all right. We're glad to see it. <laughs> We got two coming across the, the wire this morning, Mr. Peter wants to tell me about. So, last week, Kelly had mentioned her co worker, Debbie Lovis, had a cancer diagnosis. 
Oh my gosh. What's his name? Donnie Hargis. So we lifted up uh, Kelly Mathis's co-worker, Debbie Hargis, last week um, with a cancer diagnosis. And then this morning, we are lifting up her husband, Donnie Hargis, with a cancer diagnosis. And so that's a, that's a punch to the gut, for sure, for the Hargis family this morning. So we want to continue to keep them um, in our prayers and, and lift up that family. What was the other one, Peter? Okay, okay. And we want to continue to lift up Miss Norma Barefoot. I uh, went to go see Norma the other day. She's doing very well. Her treatment, and Nicole, correct me if I'm wrong, her treatment is going to be, right now they've got it at five years. That seems like a long time to me, but I guess that gives them enough time to, when things start improving, they can kind of cut it back a little bit. But she will just be taking a, uh, a chemo pill. She will not have to have radiation. She will not have to have infusions or anything of the sort. And so we give thanks, and the, and the doctors are, just about 100% confident that they got everything they needed to get that day um, in surgery. So continue to keep Miss Norma in your prayers um, as she recuperates and heals. Um, any others this morning that we want to share? Yeah. I have two. Um, Mama has a touch of pneumonia, so please keep her in your prayers. And our cousin, um, Rod Hoya, he had a stroke when we had a heart attack a few months ago. He had a stroke, and they think he's had another one, so mm. he's back in the hospital. Absolutely. Pray for Roger Boyer and Mama. So we want to lift up Ellen Holly uh, with a touch of pneumonia this morning, and Roger Boyette, who was uh, already dealing with cardiac issues but had a stroke um, last week as well. Yeah, Mike. Right. But those kids up there that don't have anybody. That's right. I mean, they're in the state's custody. And a lot of times, and you've seen it, you walk by those rooms and there's nobody Empty. in there. Little, little babies. I'm talking nine month old and little children. And there's nobody in there. And there's nobody in there all day except for the nurse. And it's a shame. It, it, it breaks my heart. But I want us to please remember that. But I'm going to try to find Absolutely. I've also got an unusual prayer request. Sure. Kristen and I this morning was in Irvin and we encountered a young guy. Uh, evidently, I didn't park to his notion. <laughs> and uh, he, he definitely had the devil riding on both of his shoulders this morning. And uh, I would say he was the insecure guy because he kept holding up his hand. Okay. And I want to him up. Absolutely, man. We'll do that. So, I, would hate to live a life. I know I would too. It's a sad existence. So, first of all, Mike wants us to continue to pray. Pray, excuse me, please, for all of those children in the PICU at, at UNC Chapel Hill, specifically the ones that have no one there with them. And and he's right. I have seen that. It breaks your heart. The room is dark. There's just a child laying there. No one in there. No one to come during the day. And so we want to specifically pray for those. And, and, and also, Mike, we'll figure out a way that we can maybe do something even more uh, tangible than, than that. Maybe we can figure out something more that we can do than that. And also, Mike and Kristen were in Irwin this morning, and they encountered a young man who was, we'll just say, less than happy to be uh, where he was this morning and uh, seemed to have a, a spirit of, of despair <laughs> overtaking him and so Mike wants to pray for that young man this morning and so I do too and uh, his wife seemed to be a little embarrassed of him and 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 so we want to pray for her as well and and we pray that uh, that a God who is always ready to welcome home the prodigal uh, will welcome him home as well and so we lift that young man up this morning church I invite us to uh, to draw close to God now and uh, be comforted by the promise that God 
draws close to us when we do that, by going to him in prayer. And let's begin with a moment of silence so that we can listen for that still, small voice this morning. Let us pray. God, we are thankful for this chance to be here in worship this morning. Thankful for the chance to honor and remember the memory of the saints who have gone on to glory in this past year. Thankful to remember and give thanks for the promise that we are all saints. All a part of the body of believers. All tasked with the job. The glorious job of sharing love and light in this world. Worship gives us the opportunity to come and to renew ourselves, to empty ourselves out, to be refilled by the power and the promise of the Holy Spirit. And so we're here to do just that this morning, God. We pray your blessing over our prayer list. We pray your blessing on those whom we have added this morning to that list. We pray for the families of those who have lost loved ones. We know that you are present in the midst of our grief. We know that you are the only one who can take what is broken and make it beautiful. And so we lay down our praises, we lay down our prayers at the foot of the throne. We pray your blessing on them as we recommit ourselves to working with you so that we can share the kingdom of heaven here on earth. We lift up these prayers this morning and we give you our praises in the name of Jesus Christ and through the power of the Holy Spirit and together all of God's people said, Amen. If our ushers will come forward now, we will continue worshiping this morning by sharing a portion of what we were reminded last week is, is already God's to begin with. The reminder that Dan shared with us that we, we give because we serve a God who just keeps on letting us get stuff. And so we're thankful for that. And I invite you to, to give back now a portion of what God has blessed you with, with the giving of our tithes and our gifts. Please stand if you're able. generous and loving God, we give you thanks for the many, many ways 
in which you share blessings with us each and every day. We ask you now to use these gifts, continue using us, so that together, partnered with you, we can share the kingdom of heaven here on earth. We ask these things in the precious name of our generous Savior, Jesus Christ, and through the power of the Holy Spirit, and together all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. me out of breath listening to that. That was awesome. Thank you all. Friends, join me in the prayer for illumination you'll find printed on the screen. Almighty God, by your Holy Spirit, illumine the sacred page, we pray, that our minds may be open to receive your word, our hearts taught to love it, and our wills strengthened to obey it. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Old Testament lesson this morning is from the prophetic book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 25, verses 6 through 9. Hear now the word of God. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wine strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. 
Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. And our gospel lesson this morning is found in the gospel of John, chapter 11, verses 32 through 44. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had, not, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again, greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave. The stone was lying against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. It's the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on all of us gathered here, all of us worshiping at home. Empower the words of my mouth, the collective meditation of all our hearts, so that together they might be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. For you, O oh Lord, are our rock and our redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I must admit that I really do love Christmas, although in our house we follow the teachings of First Thanksgivingians, chapter 1, as for me and my house, we will not decorate till Thanksgiving is celebrated. Now, many of you may have already put up some decorations in your house, and that's also a beautiful tradition to share within your own family. I haven't seen any Christmas tree lots open yet, but soon, <laughs> yeah, but soon you may head out to pick up your Christmas tree, you'll take your time going up and down the rows just looking for that perfect tree that will fit nicely in the corner of, of your room where the tree always goes without fail. And when you finally find it and you take it over to the folks to, to pay for it, what do they do with that tree? Yeah, man, they bind it up. That's right, Eugene. They bind it up. Either they tie it up with rope or... They've got this neat thing now where you just shove it through and it goes, a little net comes over it and comes out the other side. You pay for it. You take it home. I still to this day cringe when they do that because I mistakenly think that that beautiful tree that I just picked, picked so long picking out, they're going to tie it up, bind it up, it's going to be ruined after they do that. But then you get home you cut off the net, you cut off the rope, whatever the case may be, you unbind it, and it shakes itself out and becomes the beautiful tree that you saw on the lot. In our gospel text this morning, Lazarus experiences the same feeling of being unbound. The same feeling of shaking himself out a little bit and becoming a part of the world he had left four days earlier. 
And the lessons that Jesus shares with Mary and Martha and, and all the crowd gathered in Bethany that day, well, they're important for us to remember on this All Saints Sunday. It's ironic, friends, that Jesus travels back to Bethany to begin with. It's ironic because this action all but seals his ultimate fate. Tim Suttle writes in his commentary on this text, you have to remember, as long as Jesus stayed on the other side of the Jordan, he was relatively safe, was easy to maneuver, he knew the terrain. The moment he goes over to Bethany, his fate is all but sealed. He'll be arrested, and even the disciples can see that Jesus is going to trade his life for Lazarus's. And so he begins the exchange that will culminate in his trading his life for ours as well. You know, if you think about it, Jesus didn't think too much about safety when it came to his public ministry. Do you know those signs that you'll see in factories that celebrate how many days it's been since there has been an, an accident? Well, if Jesus wore a sign showing how many days it had been since he had done something unsafe or considered untoward during those times, his number would be perpetually at zero. Everything Jesus did was anti-safe. Healing on the Sabbath. Hanging out with sinners and tax collectors. Sharing meals with folks that were less than desirable, let's say, in the eyes of the religious leaders. Jesus was not a safe savior. We are invited to find safety in his arms precisely because he was unsafe. And so as we celebrate our savior who provides us safety and refuge because of the unsafe nature of his public ministry, I invite us to go back and listen again to verse 44 of our text. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with linen strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. On this All Saints Sunday, it's important for us to remember and to celebrate that Miss Joe and Jimmy and Charlie are all unbound from the fetters of this world. They've all traded in their clothes that are made of perishable material to the clothes that are made from the material that is imperishable. But it's also important to remember that we are all a part of the communion of saints. And that means that we too are unbound from the shackles of this world that try and hold us back from being the disciple Jesus needs us to be. In this morning's text, John also tells us this. Then Jesus, again, greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave. A stone was lying against it. A cave is cavernous. A cave is deep and dark. We went to uh, Limbo Caverns a couple of weeks ago when we were in the mountains. One of the, one of the most intense parts of the whole tour, and Ben, you think you can agree with this with me, they turn out the lights, all of them. And you're standing there in what they call total darkness. They call it something different than that, I think. But anyway, friends, I'm going to tell you right now. You, you can't see nothing. The hand in front of your face, nothing. And your eyes do not adjust to that. Eventually, you go blind. That's why the fish that are there that swim in the little stream are blind. Because their eyes have not adjusted. Their eyes have ceased to work in that darkness. There's a stone against the entrance to a cave. Thankfully, there is not one at Limbo Caverns. If there's a stone at the entrance of a cave, that prevents all light from coming in or going out. The darkness of the world attempts to bind us up and block the light of the world from coming in, from going out. And if, if we're not careful, we may begin 
to close up our hearts and allow grief and sadness and, and darkness to have their way. And, and worse yet, we can begin to feel comfortable in the dark. The dark starts to become our friend. The dark begins to feel like home. But just like Jesus instructed those gathered to unbind Lazarus, he wants us to live unbound as well. Jesus tells us in several places in John's gospel that he is the light of the world. Speaking directly to the Pharisees in chapter 8, he says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Just another example of Jesus not playing it safe. Speaking to the very religious leaders who are seeking to have him arrested and proclaiming to them the truth that he, and he alone, is the light of the world. Proclaiming to them the promise that the darkness will never be greater than the light. But you know, it doesn't end with the perceived power of a stone blocking the light of the world from getting in. That same stone can also bind us up and prevent us from, from sharing the light of the world. Matthew reminds us that we are to let our light shine before others. Not to hide it under a bushel basket or under a, a lamp. If we don't allow Jesus to unbind us, we become less and less likely to be light bearers in this dark world. But when we live unbound, we're able to mobilize. We're able to come together as a community. And together we speak light and we become light when we're faced with the injustices of our world. Instead of cowering in the darkness, we're able to spring up and meet the injustices head on. The question becomes, do you believe this is possible? Because the same statement Jesus shares with Martha is the same statement at some point in our lives he shares with all of us. Did I not tell you that if you believed you would see the glory of God. Do you believe? It seems like a pretty straightforward question, and, and obviously it has a, a simple answer, one that's harder at times for us to come up with than, than others. And, and Martha, earlier in chapter 11, she gives Jesus a pretty good answer. She tells him she believes he is the Messiah. She believes Jesus is the Son of God coming into the world. But she also says, if you'd have been here earlier, Lazarus wouldn't have died. Her answers are right. Her answers are good. But sometimes they're hard for us to put into practice. And part of that reason is because we're bound up by what the world tells us to believe. The world tells us that we need to, to see something or, or hear something. Something needs to make perfect sense in order for us to believe. But Jesus says, if you need to understand, if you need to see or feel, you will never believe. That sentiment, much like Jesus, is, is countercultural, though, right? Our culture, our society, our world tells us we have to analyze and make reports and have meetings and, and draw conclusions. And then, if all the facts add up, if everything lines up, maybe we can believe. But throughout John's Gospel, we find Jesus time and time and time again giving us the tools to unbind ourselves from the trappings of this world. Jesus says, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? Jesus says, but if I do them, even though you do not believe me, believe the works so that you may know and understand that the Father is in me and I am in the Father. Jesus says, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. Jesus says, put your finger here. See my hand. 
Put your finger in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. If Jesus had asked Martha that question today, she might have said, Jesus, give me some data, some reports. I'll form a committee. We'll hash it out. And I'll get back to you. But thankfully, Martha had the faith to believe the answer that she gave Jesus. She herself was unbound. And she was able to answer the question about belief because she believed in the very one who was asking the question. She had the belief to proclaim the promise of the resurrection to the very one who would share that promise with us all just a few weeks later. And that is what being a disciple of Jesus Christ is all about. Celebrating and proclaiming every day the power of resurrection that all of the saints are a part of. Celebrating and proclaiming not only the promise of eternal life when our short time here on earth is over, but also celebrating and proclaiming the opportunity for incarnation and transformation in and through the promises of the very one who is the resurrection and the life. We may never witness a person actually being raised from the dead. But friends, all of us have witnessed someone who we thought was dead to the promises of Jesus being born again to new life. That's incarnation. That's transformation. That's resurrection. And that, my sisters and brothers, is living unbound. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, we are able to come to the table of grace this morning to celebrate everything that the body and blood of Christ means to us as disciples of Jesus. And so I first want to ask you, did everybody get a communion cup this morning? If you did not, our ushers will make sure you get one. Skyland's got hers. Ben did not get one. Joey, will you bring Ben one, please? I think Ben's the only one. And so I remind you that Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and who seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Church, hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners, and that proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. And now, friends, I invite you to turn to your neighbor on your left and your right. Share the peace of Christ, which passes all understanding. And I say to you, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. And a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. God of Abraham and Sarah. God of Miriam and Moses. God of Joshua and Deborah. God of Ruth and David. God of the priests and the prophets, God of Mary and Joseph, God of the apostles and the martyrs, God of our mothers and our fathers, God of our children to all generations. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, 
Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. By your great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of your Son from the dead and to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. Once we were no people, but now we are your people, declaring your wonderful deeds in Christ who called us out of darkness and into his marvelous light. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, our Savior took bread. Having given thanks to you, he blessed the bread, broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was over, Jesus took the cup. And having given thanks to you, he blessed the cup and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, drink from this cup, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Jesus Christ that we might be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. Renew our communion with all your saints, especially those whom we name before you now. Josephine Barefoot, Jimmy Johnson, and Charlie Sullivan. Since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, strengthen us to run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ and one with one another. Until that glorious day when Christ comes again in final victory, and we feast together at his holy banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, empowered by the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forevermore. Amen. You'll take your cup and you'll peel away the first layer, revealing the body of Christ given for you. Amen. And if you will peel away the second layer, revealing the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. I invite you to take just a moment to give thanks for the grace that is poured out at the table. And I invite you to join me in the prayer after communion that you'll find printed. Oh, excuse me, I'm sorry, I forgot about the Lord's Prayer. we got to say that, y'all. Let's pray together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples and continues to teach us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now, friends, I invite us to say the prayer after communion together that you'll find printed on the screen. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world the strength of your spirit, 
to give ourselves to others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Friends, if you'll stand together with me, if you're able, we will sing verses 1 and 4 of Lift Up Your Heads, Ye Mighty Gates. Amen. Friends, receive this benediction and this blessing and then be seated for just a moment. We'll share some announcements and uh, on some birthdays and anniversaries. But first, receive this benediction and this blessing. On this All Saints Sunday, O oh Lord, we celebrate the power and the promise of resurrection. We celebrate and give thanks the promise that we are all a part of the communion of saints, all called to live unbound, all called to share light and love in this world as we leave this place may we feel empowered to do just that and may we always do these things and so much more in the name of god the father god the son and god the holy spirit amen, amen. you may be seated so friends i want to share with you a a couple of announcements this morning um, you can turn to your bulletin and find those announcements um, Children and Youth Sunday will be coming up November 21st at 9.30 a.m. We've got a lot more details forthcoming with that, um, but we, we do want you to make every effort to have your child and or your youth in worship that day. Linda or Michelle, do y'all want to share anything about Wednesday night? Awesome. Thank you, Linda. Thank you, Michelle, for all that you are doing for our children. Um, I, the, all that information was, was in that email that you received for those of you worshiping at home. And also, we'll, we'll continue to keep you updated so you will, you'll be on top of, of all that. So I give thanks for Linda and Michelle and for, for you all for allowing us to minister to your children and to be a part of their lives. Thanksgiving Love Feast is coming together November 21st at 5 p.m., that afternoon, that's two weeks from today. Um, entertainment is going to be provided by Brian Jackson and Amelia Olson. Amelia is the daughter of Billy Olson, who is the pastor at uh, Benson United Methodist Church. So we look forward to welcoming her, look forward to Brian leading us in some, some hymn singing, and look forward to Eddie leading us, uh, for those of us who are, are less than stellar singers, leading us in the uh, singing of, of said hymns. So we're excited about that. See Carol, or does Michelle still, you've still got the list. We're looking pretty good. We do need turkeys. 
and or hams, correct? Are we doing all turkeys? We're good ham. Okay, good ham. Need some turkey and dressing and gravy. Need some turkey and dressing and gravy. So if you can reach out to Carol and, and let her know that you'll bring a, a bird and some dressing or gravy up, we would certainly appreciate it. We're excited about gathering together as a community and sharing a meal during the Thanksgiving season. Hanging at the Green Service, November 28th. That's three weeks from today at 7 o'clock p.m. Please be praying about uh, your family's availability and willingness to serve during this special time of worship. Our worship committee will be contacting some of you soon to see if you will be able to do that, and so we, uh, we give thanks for that. Also, save the date for that Saturday before. We'll have to get everything sort of set up, the Christmas tree, the Christmas tree, excuse me, at least up, the Advent wreath up, um, so that we can uh, be ready for Advent on that first Sunday of Advent before our hanging of the green service. So be on the lookout for a, a time for that to, to come up here. We certainly need some men, uh, as well as the ladies, to come up here um, and help us with that. And our Advent study, beginning Tuesday, November 30th, we'll, we'll meet at 6.30 in the Fellowship Hall. And then for the next four Tuesdays, which finishes on December 21st, for an Advent study titled Almost Christmas, a Wesleyan Advent Experience. It's a great study. I look forward to, to sharing in this time with you. All you need to do is, is bring yourself, um, and that's it. And we are, we're going to celebrate the anticipation uh, that the arrival of Jesus brings to us fresh and new each year. Any other announcements that we need to share this morning? Yeah, Carol. Um, the Christ Community mm -hmm. Christmas Closet Toy Drive is also December the 12th. Mm -hmm. They usually go hand in hand with the Christmas program every year. So if you want to help volunteer or donate toys or monetary donations, whatever, Jesus, so we can go ahead and be well equipped to help out family, needy families that day. And that's at 9 o'clock, correct? Is that right? Okay. So that's the Christmas closet that day, December 12th, 9 to, to 1 that day. So we are about that time. We're excited for that. Be thinking about ways you can share. No, the 11th is the 11th. The 11th is the Saturday. I think that's right. Yeah, it's right. That's the 11th. Because the 12th is when you want to do the part, the play, right? Yes. The, which is a Sunday. Okay. Good, because I'm going to tell you something. That's all right, because Pastor Clay was about to have a heart attack, because, <laughs> because my lovely wife has always already told me that we're, we're going to a gathering that has not been able to take place the last two years because of COVID, and, it, and it's on the 11th, and I was like, wait a minute, if the, if the Christmas closet is the same day as that, that's, man, I, oh man, I have messed up, so. <laughs> no, I was thinking whew. dress rehearsal, they usually do gotcha. dress rehearsal. So the, the Christmas, you're fine. The Christmas closet is December 11th, and the children's Christmas play is December 12th. We look forward to both of those things. Birthdays. Wreath and Noel. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry, Sarah. Go ahead. I just wanted to invite everyone. That's right. Thank you. Shower, uh, her baby shower is next Saturday at the church from 2 to 4. Thank you. I appreciate that, Sarah. Yeah, we're, we're going to shower uh, Emily and Elliot with with love uh, this coming Saturday in the Fellowship Hall, and that's from 2 to 4 to celebrate her and her, her baby shower. Um, I'm not going to tell you what they're going to name him. It's sweet. If you want to ask her later, you can, she can tell you, but it's real sweet. So I'm looking forward to, to meeting baby. I can tell them? Okay, they're going to name him Emmett. Isn't that the sweetest thing? It's a, a, a combination of Elliot and Emily. Isn't that awesome? And I love that name too. Emmett's such a cool name. All right, that's awesome. We look forward to celebrating Emily and Elliot next Saturday. Any others? We're going to pray for you, you guys at pilgrimage. Yeah, thank you. We'll, we'll be leaving Friday uh, to head off to pilgrimage for a few days. Um, pray for the youth and the chaperones. Those of you that have reached out to me, I have given you a person to pray for in the, the upcoming week and to pray for while we are there at pilgrimage. So we're excited about that. I will not be here next Sunday because I will be with our youth. So Phyllis um, will be kind of handling things on her own. I may, I may ask a couple of you to help her out a little bit. This is going to be a good learning experience for her to, to lead worship sort of, sort of solo on her own. So we look forward to that and what she will be sharing with you next Sunday. Thank you, Amy. Okay. Choir practice, 6 o'clock tonight. Be there, be square. 6 o'clock. All right. Yeah, we still need more people. Still need more people? But y'all sounded great. Thank you. Upcoming. Tomorrow morning, uh, Waffle House, McGee's Crossroads, 8 o'clock. Come join me out there. We'll share some breakfast and a devotion and some 
prayer time to get you started for your week. All right, birthdays, here we go. Retha Knowles, don't nobody ask me how old she is because I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> Retha Knowles' birthday is November 10th, so we lift up Miss Retha and give thanks for that, for her birthday, and Lane McLam's birthday is November 13th. And anniversaries, he already scooted out on us so we don't have a chance to ask him if he knows how many years. He better know how many years. Okay, he, uh, Gina says he knows. <laughs> Brian and Gina Cobb Jackson celebrate their anniversary on November 11th. How many years? Ten. Ten years. That's a big one. Good job. Congratulations. Let's congratulate all our birthdays and our anniversaries. Yeah, we need to add them. To, I bet we didn't have them on there. Yep, we'll do that. So Barrett and Bennett, although we uh, celebrated their birthday yesterday, their birthday is... November 10th. you got to tell Miss Retha she shares a birthday with Barrett and Bennett. That's sweet. Yeah. So their birthday is November 10th as well. Any other birthdays we need to share for this upcoming week through the, uh, the 13th? Something going on? Do we need to share something? Okay. Does she, have, does she doesn't have a birthday. Who's got a birthday? Anybody? Oh, okay. All right. Anniversaries that we need to share for the upcoming week. Awesome. Let's say a prayer of blessing over our biscuits this morning as we go to fellowship and, and give thanks. It is 1047, so we'll try for about 1110 or so to dismiss for Sunday school this morning. Let us pray. God, thank you for worship. Thank you for the gift of celebrating the saints, for the gift of celebrating the Lord's Supper, for the gift of being in communion with one another. We ask your blessing on our biscuits now, the folks that prepared them, may the time of fellowship and, and eating be good for our hearts. May we draw closer to you as you, in turn, draw closer to us. We ask this blessing in the name of Jesus Christ and through the power of the Holy Spirit and together all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. We'll see you down there in a minute.